Hi, my name is Shannon, and I'm a systems engineer on the partner engineering team. Today, I'll be walking you through the code lab on how to build a mobile app using home APIs on iOS. By the end of this video, you'll know how to build an iOS mobile app using the Google Home APIs, how to use the device and structure APIs to obtain and control devices in the user's home, how to use the commissioning APIs to add matter devices to the Google Home ecosystem, and finally, how to use the automation APIs to create, delete, and edit a smart home automation. After completing this code lab, you'll have a working iOS app where users can access their smart home. Before we jump in, if you'd like a refresher on Google Home APIs or a guide on how to build your own smart home app on Android, refer to the previous video. All right, let's get started. First, ensure that you have the following, the latest version of Xcode installed, an iOS device running iOS 16.4 or greater set up with a test account, a compatible Google Home Hub for Matter devices, and a compatible smart home device, like a light or an outlet. For the latest version requirements, scan the QR code on the screen to check the developer center. If you don't have your own smart home devices, we have virtual devices you can use, Google Home Playground for cloud devices, and Matter Virtual Device for Matter devices. Use the QR code on the screen to go to the developer center. There you'll find instructions on how to set up your virtual device and how to link your device to the Google Home app. And lastly, you will need an Apple ID enrolled in the Apple Developer Program to generate the provisioning profile. Now let's go ahead and set up your project. First, we'll clone the sample app source code from GitHub. The sample app contains two branches, Start, which contains the starter code where you'll be making changes to complete the code lab, and Finished, the completed code used to check your work. Throughout this code lab, you will find to-do blocks within the Start branch. These mark the sections where you will add code to implement the required functionality. Our app requires that the app attest capability be enabled, so we'll also need to create Apple deployment configuration files. Note that this also means the app must use a physical iOS device and cannot be deployed to simulator devices. You'll find instructions on how to create Apple deployment configuration files at the QR code shown on screen. After successful setup, let's open the source code with Xcode. Connect your physical iOS phone, and we can run the sample app. Now that we have our environment, we need to set up our authentication process. The Home APIs use OAuth 2.0 to grant access to devices in the structure. OAuth allows a user to grant permission to an app or a service without having to expose their login credentials. To get the OAuth client ID and enable Home APIs, first sign into Google Cloud and either create a new project or select the desired project to create OAuth credentials. Then access the APIs and Services page by clicking the Menu button on the top left, and then APIs and Services. From the Navigation menu, click Credentials. If you haven't configured your consent screen for this project yet, a Configure Consent Screen button will appear. If your OAuth consent screen is already configured and in testing status, ensure that the test accounts you intend to use are added to the test users group. When configuring the consent screen, select either internal or external based on your use case, and then click Create. Proceed to the test user's pane. If you opted for an internal consent screen, you must add users to test access to your app. Click Add Users, enter one or more Google account emails in the empty field, and click Add. After configuring the consent screen, return to the Credentials section on the left menu panel to create your OAuth client ID. Click the Create Credentials button and select OAuth client ID. Under Application Type, choose iOS. Enter your app's bundle ID and Apple Developer Team ID into the respective fields. Click Create, and be sure to note the generated client ID or download plist, as this will be essential later for enabling permissions flow functionality. For additional information on authorization credentials, scan the QR code on the screen. To enable access to the Home APIs, navigate to the APIs and Services tab and click on Enabled APIs and Services. Proceed to search for and select the Home API. Finally, on the Home API Detail page, click Enable. 
The sample app also requires locally adding the SDK framework files, populating your developer account identifier information, and populating your OAuth client ID. To obtain the Home API's SDK, use the QR code on the screen, which will guide you through the instructions on our developer center. After downloading, begin by setting up the framework libraries. Extract the contents of the download into the Frameworks folder within your Xcode project, ensuring it now contains Google Home SDK and Google Home types. Next, open the Xcode project. Select the Frameworks folder in the Project Navigator. And if the frameworks aren't already present, click the Add icon to add Google Home SDK and Google Home Types framework files by selecting Add Files to Project. Next, configure your Xcode project for the sample app by selecting the Google Home API sample iOS file in the Xcode navigation pane to edit the project configuration. In the General tab, select the Google Home API sample iOS target, scroll to the Frameworks Libraries and Embed Content section, and ensure Embed and Sign is selected for the Google Home SDK framework file, while the Google Home Types framework file remains as Do Not Embed. Then add the Safari services.framework file and set its embed column to do not embed. For the matter add device extension target, select it under target. Scroll to frameworks and libraries and set the Google Home SDK frameworks embed column to do not embed. Proceed to configure the developer and OAuth client IDs. Open the info plist file within the Google Home API sample iOS folder and populate GID client ID with your OAuth client ID cloud project number with your cloud project number, and GID team ID with your Apple developer team ID used during OAuth registration. To add app attest capability, select the Google Home API sample iOS project file, go to the signing and capabilities tab for the Google Home API sample iOS target, click add capability, and search for and add app attest. Similarly, add the app group's capability to both the Google Home API sample iOS and Matter Add device extension targets by clicking Add Capability, selecting Add Groups, and adding the app group's identifier for your app. Finally, update the bundle identifier. In the Signing and Capabilities tab for both the Google Home API sample iOS and Matter Add device extension targets. Input the unique bundle identifier, matching your OAuth client credentials, in the Bundle Identifier field, and select or install the associated provisioning profile with the required entitlements. Note that two provisioning profiles are needed, one for each target. Lastly, update the registered app group identifier in the code by searching for and replacing each instance of the tag Home API to do add app group with your app group ID in the Google Home API sample iOS file, request handler file, and commissioning manager file. Remember to search for the same tag in the sample code itself as well and replace it with the appropriate string. In the next section, we'll initialize the SDK and handle user permissions. We'll start by initializing the home object in the app. Home is the top-level entry to the SDK and provides access to all entities in the user structure. When requesting all entities of a particular type, the API returns a query object that lets you choose how to receive the results. In the account view model Swift file, remove the comment and alert in the connect function to initialize the home. Let's run the app again to grant permissions to use the home APIs. On the consent screen, choose the Google Home structure and select the account that is on your Google Cloud Projects allow list. Next, we'll take a look at our device and structure APIs. Let's open the structure view model Swift file and fill in the get rooms and devices to do. The process function processes the room and device structure, ensuring the devices are in the same room and then allowing the devices to interact using device control and device factory. Note that if your device is not listed in the device control factory, it will be displayed as unsupported. To learn more about which devices are supported, scan the QR code on the screen to read up on supported device types. Now, we see a plug called Outlet 1. 
If we try to control it, it will be inactive. To enable device interaction, let's open the on-off plugin unit control file and fill in the primary action to do. This function will toggle the on-off state of a smart plug or any device represented by this device type. Next, let's go back to the structure view model file and implement the add room function. Now let's run the app again and click on the add icon. Input your new room name and click create room. Fantastic, now we have a new room. The Structure API not only enables the creation and deletion of rooms, but also the transfer of devices between rooms. In the same Structure view model file, let's add the move device function. With the move device function implemented, let's rerun the app. To relocate the device, we'll press and hold the device in the app, select move to another room, and choose the new room. Lastly, to delete an empty room, add the code for the remove room function in the same file. Running the app again, let's create an empty room by moving the device back. Now we'll remove the empty bedroom by clicking the trash icon to the right of the room name and confirm the action. Note that only rooms that are empty can be deleted. For Matter devices specifically, our commissioning API lets you add devices to the Google Home ecosystem making these Matter devices available to control using Home APIs. Before we begin, note that this section requires a Matter device and a compatible Google Hub that supports Matter. If you're using Matter virtual device offered on our Developer Center instead of a physical Matter device, you'll also need a developer project on the Google Home Developer Console. For more detailed instructions on this process, scan the QR code on the screen. Once you have your Matter environment set up, we're ready to use the commissioning APIs. In the Commissioning Manager Swift file, find the to-do labeled Add Matter Device and let's implement the Add Matter Device function. This enables the Matter Device commissioning flow for users to add a device to their home. Let's take a look at the app. Create a new room, select the Add icon, and collect Add Device to Google Fabric. This uses a Matter Add Device request to add the device to the room. After selecting the room and device name, you'll see your device is displayed in the Devices screen. Great job! Now that we know about devices and structures, let's talk all about automations. We're going to go over how to view all automations in the structure, how to create an automation, and how to delete an automation. To start with, let's open the automations view in the app. Tap on automations in the bottom navigation bar. It will list all the automations in your structure. If you don't have any home automation set up yet, you will see the message, add an automation to get started. Before we create an automation, let's talk a little bit about what automations are. Automations are a set of if this, then that statements that can automate device state control based on selected factors. Automations are made up of three different types of components called nodes, starters, conditions, and actions. Starters define the initial conditions that activate the automation, such as a change to a trait attribute. An automation must have a starter. A condition is any additional constraint that must evaluate to true in order for the actions of an automation to execute. Actions are commands or state updates that are performed when all conditions have been met. These nodes work together to automate behaviors using smart home devices. All right, now that we understand the components of an automation, let's create one. First, in the automations repository file, let's implement the light automation function. This automation will turn off light two after five seconds. Now let's switch over to our app and go to the automations view and click the add button. Then select turn off light after five seconds. The automation details, including the starter, condition, and action will appear. Note that the available automations depend on the devices in your home. If you don't see any available automations, try renaming your light to light two. Okay, let's click save to create the automation. 
Now let's test it. Return to the Devices tab and turn on the light named Light2. It will automatically turn off after five seconds. And there you go. You've created your first automation with the Home APIs. If you want to delete the automation, the delete automation function is invoked when you swipe left on an existing automation and tap the trash icon to remove it from your structure. You've made it to the end of the code lab. Congratulations on successfully building an iOS app using the Google Home APIs. If you're interested in building an Android app using the Google Home APIs, make sure to check out our other videos. As always, the Google Home Developer Center is your go-to site for all the information on the Google Home APIs. Congrats again, now get creative, and we can't wait to see what innovations you build with the Home APIs.